today we're going to talk about matrices. Now, if you have no idea what a matrix is, that is fine. Or sometimes students have a little recall from Algebra 1, but uh, don't worry. Um, matrices aren't, really aren't that hard. Um, it's more of how we can use them. Boy, they can be used in a really powerful way to make our life easier, to make our algebra life easier. So we need to learn a few things about matrices for a couple days and then hang it, hang out, uh, hang in there because I will show you the purpose for this. I promise it's going to make something easier. Now, first thing is, what's a matrix? Well, it's really just an array of numbers. That's a fancy way to say that their numbers are in rows and columns. So a matrix is not just like a bag of numbers all scrambled up. They're organized. They're in an array. Here we have a matrix A and a matrix B. You'll probably want to jot those down. We're going to use them to do a couple things here. Now, if you need to pause the video, go ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to keep rolling with the what we can do with this. Uh, the first thing is we can talk about the order of a matrix. So let's talk about the order of matrix A. And sometimes when we say that, we put these matrix bars, these brackets around the A, just to make sure that we know we're talking about matrix A. Now, what's the order you say? Well, the order is the same as the size. And the size is always given as the rows, then the columns, just like I have written up here. You always give the rows than the columns. So how many rows in matrix A? Well, you should count two rows. And then how many columns in matrix A? One, two, three columns. So we have a two by three. Again, two rows, three columns. How about the order of matrix B? The order of matrix B. Well, yes, it would be the same. It would be a two by three two rows, three columns. Now, another thing about matrices is we can talk about an element. And an element is just a fancy word for a number that's in the matrix. But we like to talk about the position using a little notation. For example, if I want to know the element that's in matrix A, row two, column three, you would see me write A sub two, comma three. We use this little subscript notation. Now remember, the two would be the second row, and the three would be the third column. So what number is in the second row, third column? That's right, it would definitely be negative six. So we would say that element of the element in matrix A, sub two comma three is negative six. Do you wanna see if you can find the uh, uh, element that is in matrix B? Uh, how about we do um, uh, three comma two? Three comma two. A little weird, is it? Row three? That's right, there is no row three. That means that there is no element that is in three, in matrix B sub three, two. So we would say that it's undefined. All right, what else can we do with matrices? Well, we can. Uh, we can do like a matrix operation. An operation would just be like maybe multiplying or adding or subtracting. And so here's a problem that has all kinds of things built into it. We have negative four B minus three A. Now what this really means is we're gonna take negative four and we're gonna multiply it by matrix B. And uh, yes, a little bit of copying that's required to do that but I'll just let you know that ultimately we're just gonna distribute negative four to all those numbers. Now the same thing's gonna happen here when we have minus three A, really that's just gonna mean we're gonna take a three and we're gonna multiply it into matrix A. And so there's some recopying of numbers, but we're basically just gonna distribute a three. Now you say, well, Miss, Miss Naylor, why don't you distribute negative three? Well, I could, uh, but all that's gonna do is just put negative signs inside the matrix. I suppose there's already some there, but I'm gonna leave it as a subtraction sign. Um, and I'm gonna encourage you to do the same thing. So every number gets multiplied by negative four. Yeah, I guess we're gonna get some negatives here. 
but every number gets multiplied by negative 4. So now we have 16, 32, negative 4, negative 8, negative, positive 12, and 0. And here again, I'm going to leave that as a subtraction sign. So I'm just going to distribute positive 3 to all 6 elements. Well, you should be able to do that. You distribute positive 3 and record your answers. How'd you do? You should be getting these uh, six elements. That's just a fancy word for the numbers in the matrix. Now what are we gonna do? Well, now we're gonna do the subtraction sign. And when you subtract, you subtract what's known as corresponding entries. Now, corresponding entries would simply be numbers that are in the same position. So we're gonna take 16 minus 15. And uh, of course, that's one. And then we're going to take 32 minus negative 27. Now be careful, that's really 32 plus, uh, that's really 32 plus, uh, uh, what, uh, 27, but that comes out to be 59. And then we have corresponding entry, negative 4 minus 15, and of course that just becomes more negative 19. Do you want to subtract the other three corresponding entries? And how'd you do? You should be getting negative two. You should be getting negative nine and 18. And that was a matrix operation. Remember, we took uh, negative 4b minus 3a uh, to end up with this new matrix. Now, one thing that was true about this problem is that in order for us to even do the subtraction, the size of the matrices, the order of the matrices had to be equal. So I had a, what, a two by three, and well, of course, a two by three. Now I know that's pretty basic, but in a second, we're gonna do a problem uh, that they don't have to be equal. But in order to do addition and subtraction, they have to be of equal size. Here's another addition and subtraction problem. Um, but, oh, it looks like we're trying to actually solve for x and y. Well, when you solve for x and y, um, I got a little ding dong there. When you solve for x and y, you're gonna have to make sure that you create an equation that uses the corresponding entries. So it looks like y plus x equals negative six is the only is one of the equations I can make that uses x and y. And then what do you see here? It looks like we have another equation uh, that looks like it's just gonna use x. So we're trying to find x and y. Do you feel like that uh, we have enough information to find x equaling four? I think so, that's pretty easy. And then you can just take x equals four and you can plug it in here. Uh, and of course that will give you an equation that you can solve for y. I hope you just subtract four and get negative 10. And so we have found our unknowns. Now the other piece of today's lesson is matrix multiplication. And I do wanna sort of warn you honestly that this is a little more complicated than just uh, multiplying uh, some corresponding numbers. Uh, it's not the same thing as addition and subtraction. Um, trust me, it's it's a little process because what you end up doing is you end up multiplying a row to a column. I just want you to see that language. We end up multiplying a row to a column and then you add each result. You'll find out that it takes, it's kind of a two-dimensional process, uh, but that's because you're multiplying two-dimensional um, matrices. Now, in order to do this, if I have a matrix, like this first matrix here that has uh, some certain amount of rows and columns, uh, and then I have a second matrix here that has some certain amount of rows and columns, what turns, what has to be, it turns out what has to be true is that these numbers have to be equal. Uh, if they're not equal, then you can't actually do the matrix multiplication. And we find out that these numbers uh, end up creating the uh, final dimensions, uh, the final dimensions of my uh, final matrix. So 
don't worry, I'll show you, but uh, there's a little more thinking involved with matrix multiplication. Ready to do an example? Here's two matrices. We're multiplying them together. Okay, again, this is not just the distributed property like we did in the previous problems. This is a matrix multiplication, quite simply because we have this product sign here. Now, first, before I even try to do this problem, I have to make sure that the numbers match up correctly. So how many rows in this first matrix? Yeah, two. How many columns? Correct, three. So this is a two by three. How many rows in this matrix? Oh, three. And how many columns? Of course, two. Now. What do you remember from the previous slide? These numbers have to be equal, and they are. These numbers out here make the final dimensions, or make the dimensions of my final matrix. So it's interesting, my final matrix is going to only be a two by two. Can we kind of make a little two by two up here? I think so. We're only gonna end up with four numbers in this two by two. So. That's interesting because each one of these matrices has six numbers. Let's actually do this row times column strategy. Let me show you what this means. You take the row in the first matrix and you multiply it by the column of the second matrix. Now, when you do this, you have three sets of numbers that correspond. The first numbers that correspond are one and two. And what we do with those numbers is we multiply them. Now, sometimes people do this on the side, sometimes people do this in the calculator, sometimes they just do it in their head. But we're gonna take one times two. One times two is two. Next, I have a three that corresponds with negative two. Three corresponds with negative two is gonna multiply and be negative six. And lastly, negative five corresponds with one. I multiply them and you got it, we get negative five. Now, remember what the uh, direction said? You have to multiply, which we did, and then you have to add. You have to add these results together. That means it's gonna be like two plus negative six plus negative five. Now, when you add those together, you get negative nine. What's negative nine? It's finally the answer that I put in the first row, first column of my answer matrix. Ready to try another one? We have to take a row times a column. Now, a lot of times what students realize is that they will stay with the same row, but this time you'll bounce over to the next column. And when you do this, you have, and when you do this, you have to make sure that you correspond the correct numbers. So one corresponds with three. It's kind of like they're both the first number. So I take one times three. Of course, that's three. This three corresponds with negative eight. What do we do with those? We multiply them, we get negative 24. And finally, the last number, negative five, corresponds with the seven. What do we do with those? We multiply them and get negative 35. Now remember, each of these results we add. We add carefully and we get negative 56. Negative 56 is the number that is going to end up in the first row, second column. That's because that's the row and column I multiplied together. What do you think? Sometimes kids are ready to do some of this on their own. Sometimes you wanna see another one. Um, I've got some more colors to use so we can go to the next row, but actually back to that first column. You have to match the first number with the first number. Four matches with two. Multiply, you get eight. The next number is negative two, matches actually with negative two. Multiply and get four. And finally, uh, zero matches with one. You're gonna find out that zeros are nice because they always leave us with just a zero. Add those up. And you, of course, get 12. Now, what did you multiply? That's right, the second row in the first column. So that's why we put a 12 in that position, in the second row, first column. 
stay in the second row, bounce to the second column. Basically, you've now matched every row and column. It's time to multiply and add oh, one more time. How's that going? Four goes with three, multiply to be 12. Negative two goes to negative eight, multiply to be 16. And zero goes to seven, multiply to be zero. Add those up, pretty sure we get 28. And that is called, that is matrix multiplication. You gotta try one. And that's what I have here. Okay, what do you think here? I know you're gonna have to copy these down. You can always push pause if you want to. Remember, you have to first make sure the numbers match up correctly. Both of these are two by twos. Now, it doesn't matter that they're the same size. What matters is that these numbers match. And of course, if those numbers match, then you're going to be able to use these outside numbers to create your overall size. Okay, so we're gonna end up with a two by two based on the overall dimensions. You can even kind of create a little two by two if you want. This is a good problem to try on your own. I'm going to be one step behind you. You should be getting negative 30 and negative nine. Add those together and that gives you negative 39. Sometimes students will uh, just kind of stick with the same, uh, well, not just, not just, I'm sorry, you need to stick with the same row, um, same row, but now bounce to the next column. Make sure that six is matching up with negative four. Negative three matches up with three. It's gonna give us a negative nine. You add those together. That'll be the number that goes in the first row, second column. Time to move over, move down that is, to the next row, but back to the first column. Now be careful, be careful, negative 10, negative five. Your eyes need to match those. So that's gonna come out to be 50, and then negative two and three. Add those together. I'm going to take it back down to 44. And then stay in that row, but bounce to the next column. Make sure your eyes are linking negative 10 with negative 4 and negative 2 with 3. Add those together. And that will be the number that goes in the second row, second column. Matrix multiplication. Okay, now you'll know it's matrix multiplication when you got two matrices and that uh, little product sign between them. Um, but again, that is not the same as what happened up here when we just distributed a number in front. Uh, actually, we call that scalar multiplication because we're just distributing a single number. Okay, but matrix multiplication is more of this row column strategy. Well, there's some homework problems that go with uh, today's lesson. They should just be uh, in a PDF that you can click on. Go ahead and give those a shot and we're gonna, we'll add a little bit more to matrices next time.